part 9 of polytechnic lecturer previous year question discussion video okay so we are going to see some more questions in this video you will be seeing the questions on board the first question is vhsic hardware description language is commonly called dash a vhdl b verilog hdl c vhs hdl d none of this the correct answer is vhdl so if you see the expansion of vhdl it is vhdl and vhdl v stands for vhsic and it is hardware description language okay so this v stands for actually vhsic hdl is hardware description language so this vhdl verilog all these are hardware description languages and in this uh, type of programming we are actually considering the hardwares and for those hardwares we are actually writing the program okay so uh, in the other high level programming we are writing a code and when, then we are considering the hardware right so in the other programming languages what we are doing is we are just writing a code for our requirement and then we are uh, considering the hardwares and burning to that hardware right but here in uh, the hardware description languages we are taking into consideration the amount of hardware that we are having its ports and all and then we are writing the programming okay so that is the difference between the normal programming and the hardware description language programming or hdls okay the examples of uh, hardware description languages are generally vhdl and verilog are the most commonly used ones okay so these are the most commonly used type of this hardware description languages and if you see the expansion of vhdl it is v stands for vhsic and then hardware description language now what is this vhsic vhsic means it is very high speed integrated circuits okay very high speed integrated circuits so these are the uh, that is that this is the expansion of a vhdl and the correct answer for this question is option a okay moving on to the second question second question is lvdt is used to measure dash a temperature b humidity c displacement b magnetic flux so lvdt is linear variable differential transformer okay so lvdt stands for linear variable differential transformer or it can also be called as linear variable displacement transducer okay so these are the two expansions of lvdt so from this second expansion it is clear that linear variable displacement transducer so it is used to measure displacement okay so there is a separate video on lvdt uh, it is given in the electronics instrumentation measurement playlist okay so if you want to have a closer look on the working principle the structure and the features of lvdt there's a video so it is used to measure displacement it is used to measure if you say it is correctly is used to measure the linear displacement okay so that is the answer for the second question correct answer is option c displacement third question third question is a network designed to attenuate certain frequencies and allow others to pass without attenuation is called dash a filter b attenuator c low noise amplifier d preamplifier so a network that is used to attenuate only certain frequencies and other frequencies it is you it can be passed that is other frequencies it will pass is called a filter okay so there are various type of filters there is low pass filter there is high pass filter there is band pass filter so these type of filters are there and then there is a band stop filter okay so low pass filter means it will be passing only lower frequencies then high pass filter means it will be passing only higher frequencies that is the cara will look like this for higher frequencies it will be having a response for the lower frequencies there won't be any response band pass means it will be passing only a 
certain band then band stop means it will cut off only a certain band likewise okay so this is the simple explanation of various type of filters anyway a network used to attenuate only certain frequencies it is called a filter correct answer is option a filter the fourth question the instrument used to display a signal in frequency domain is dash a cro b wave analyzer c spectrum analyzer d dso so we have already done videos on cro and dso for the case of cro and also for dso it is actually used to display a waveform itself but if you want to display a signal in frequency domain means it is a spectrum analyzer we know that uh, when we see when we draw the frequency diagrams of certain waveforms we call it a spectrum right the spectrum of a wave so it is the spectrum analyzer that is used for displaying of a signal in the frequency domain the correct answer is c spectrum is always standing for the term frequency so it is spectrum analyzer then next question Next question is from Digital Electronics. Number of flip flops used to construct a mod twelve counter. This how many number of flip flops are required? So, the relation is like this. So we need to find the number of flip flops that we are requiring, and the relation is like this: two raised to number of flip flops or FF should be greater than or equal to the mod value. Okay. We have done these type of questions in uh, other videos also. Okay, here. You need to find the number of flip flops. The mode value is given as twelve. So two raised to n should be greater than or equal to twelve. And here, if you put n is equal to three, it is not greater than or equal to right. Then two raised to four is sixteen, right? So sixteen is greater than or equal to twelve. So the value coming is n is equal to four, right? So here the correct answer is option C, which is four, is the correct answer. Okay, so this is the relation you have to find. That is, you have to follow. Two raised to number of flip flops should be greater than or equal to the mod value. Here, the mod value is given as twelve. Okay. Then, next question. The sixth question. Sixth question is from communication. What is the total power of a AM signal that uh, with hundred watts carrier power and hundred percentage depth of modulation? Depth of modulation is means modulation index. Okay. So the relation is like this. Pt. The total power is equal to carrier power into one plus m square by two. Okay, here we need to find the PT, that is total power of AM wave. PC is given as hundred volts into one plus m. What is m? M is the modulation index. Here it is hundred percentage, means hundred by hundred is equal to one is the value. So one plus one by two, one plus one by two is three by two. That is fifty into three. That will be one fifty watts. Okay. So this is how you calculate the power of a AM wave. Okay. So I'll write it here. M is equal to hundred by hundred. Okay. That is equal to one. So this is the relation that you have to follow for finding the value or the power of a AM wave. Total power of the AM wave is equal to carrier power into one plus modulation index square by two. So this modulation index or modulation depth, any term you can use, but it is given in percentage here. You have to convert that to the ratio value. So we have to take percentage means by hundred. So hundred by hundred is equal to one, and you will be getting the value as one fifty watts, which is correct answer is C. Okay. Then. Seventh question. Seventh question is a theory question. Foster Seeley demodulator is dash. It is a AM demodulator. It is a FM demodulator. PAM demodulator. D PPM demodulator. So Foster Seeley is always associated with the frequency modulation or the FM waves. And it is used for demodulating of FM waves. Okay. So correct answer is Foster Seeley modulator demodulator is used for demodulating of FM wave. So it is a FM demodulator. Correct answer is option B. Okay. Then 
एट्थ क्वेश्चन अगेन ए थियरी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द डिजिटल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स ओके बेस ऑफ ए नंबर सिस्टम इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एस डैश ए काउंट बी रेडिक्स सी वैल्यू डी निबल ओके सो बेस ऑफ ए नंबर सिस्टम मीन्स आई गिव यू अ ब्रीफ अबाउट दैट बेस ऑफ ए नंबर सिस्टम इफ द नंबर इज बाइनरी इट इज टू ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन जीरो वन वन टू द बेस ऑफ टू एंड द नंबर इज कॉल्ड बाइनरी नंबर सिस्टम सो दिस इज अ बाइनरी नंबर सिस्टम देन वेन ए नंबर सिस्टम इज डेसिमल दैट इज फॉर डेसिमल नंबर सिस्टम फॉर एग्जाम्पल फिफ्टीन टू द बेस ऑफ टेन द बेस इज टेन सिमिलरली फॉर ऑक्टेल नंबर्स द बेस इज एट फॉर हेक्सा डेसिमल नंबर्स द बेस इज सिक्सटीन सो दीज आर एक्चुअली बेस सी टू टेन एट सिक्सटीन दीज आर बेसिस एंड ऑल्सो वी कैन कॉल दम एज रेडिक्स इफ यू हैव स्टडी इन स्टडीड डी एस पी दैट इज डिजिटल सिग्नल प्रोसेसिंग देन देर इज अ मेथड कॉल्ड एफ एफ टी मेथड एंड वी से इट इज रेडिक्स टू एफ एफ टी एंड दैट इज वाई बिकॉज द बेस इज टू ओके so we can also call this basis radix it is not count or it is not value or nibble it is radix okay so this basis can also be called as radix correct answer is option b okay next question ninth question okay so Nyquist sampling theorem is related to a BPSK, b PPM, c PCM, d FDM. So Nyquist sampling is actually related with a digital modulation, right? Because if you want to make our signal to digital form, first we have to sample it, then we have to quantize it, right? So if you observe the given options, out of the option, the correct answer coming is pulse code modulation. because the pulse code modulation is associated with a that is it is actually a digital modulation where we are digitizing the samples right so the nyquist sampling theorem is associated with pcm that is pulse code modulation pulse code modulation okay correct answer is option c okay since it is actually a digital modulation method p have to sample it and while sampling we have to follow the nyquist sampling theorem So correct answer is option C. Tenth question. Okay, the number of bits in a binary coded decimal number. So the binary coded decimal number can also be said as B C D. So this is a another type of number system in digital electronics. Okay, in B C D we write the numbers as four bits. For example, if you want to write the number zero, we don't just write as zero zero, or just zero. We write it as zero 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 because every number is expressed as four bits. Other thing, if you want to write a one, so this corresponds to zero. If you want to write a one, then we'll write it as zero 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 one. And if you want to write a two, we know that two is one zero in binary, right? But if we are writing in B C D, then we'll write it as zero zero one zero. Similarly, if you want to write a three, then we'll write it as zero zero one one. Okay, so these are the various representations of the numbers zero one two three, and you can clearly see that every number is represented as four bits. So we can also write two as one zero and three as one one, right? But if you are going for a B C D number system, that is a binary coded number. Uh, i mean binary coded decimal number system then you have to represent every number as four bits so correct answer is option b the question is asking the number of bits in a binary coded decimal number system so it is four okay b4 is the correct answer next question The question is: All keywords in C programming are dash lower case, b upper case, both upper and lower, d 
digits only. Or keywords in the C programming are correct answer is A lower cases. Okay. Only we can use lower cases for the keywords. Okay. Next question. Again a theory question. Ripple factor of a half wave rectifier is A 1.21 B 0.482 C 40.6 D 80 point sorry 81.2 So ripple factor this thing we have discussed in many videos ripple factor for half wave is 1.21 and full wave is 0.482 approximately so these are the two values for ripple factors these are two values you should be knowing by heart okay so correct answer is a 1.21 the question is connected with the half wave again you should be knowing for full wave is 0.482 okay so correct answer is option a So, next question is, major application of a varactor diode is dash A rectifier, B voltage doubler, C demodulator, D tuning circuit. Okay, correct answer is, varactor diode is most commonly used as a, in tuning circuit. So, in super heterodyne receiver and other type of receivers, if we require tuning, we can use varactor diode, okay. So, one of the major applications of a varactor diode is, it can be used for tuning. Correct answer is option D. Fourteen question. The cut-in voltage of a germanium diode is dash. A. 0 0.3 b 0 0.6 c 1.0 d 0 0.7 for a silicon the cutting voltage or the built-in potential you can call it by either name built-in potential or cutting voltage for silicon it is 0 0.7 volt and for germanium it is 0 0.3 volt okay here the question is connected with the germanium. So, correct answer is option A. 0 0.3 volt is the cut-in voltage. Okay. So, these are the questions that I have included in this video. So, I am really hoping that you found these questions useful. These are the previous year questions from the uh, Polytechnic Lecture Examination itself. So, these are the actually uh, the level of questions that you can expect. There are also uh, some numerical questions. We will be including that in the upcoming videos also. Okay. So anyway, if you are preparing for the Polytechnic Lecture Examination, it, the exam is going to happen on January. So please do fasten your preparations. We will be doing more videos uh, in the upcoming days. Okay. So if you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do share it with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.